Hi, I'm Richard. Uh, welcome to the brand tour. Behind the camera is my beautiful wife Sonia, and we've got an exciting start. This is the Ineos Grenadier. Now, this is the five seat station wagon. It's in inky black and it's pretty much standard. We've got the smooth pack on it, which has a few extras. Uh, we've also got the standard steels, but it does have the big wheels on. And we've also added the ladder to the back. Now, just so you're aware, we didn't spec the utility strip, but they, they're all coming with them as standard at the moment. So if you're on the, on the fence about whether you want it or not, which is this bit here, I would say don't order it because it's, I think it's like a £450 option and the uh, supplying it anyway. If you definitely want to, probably don't take that risk. So what do I think? I've been driving it for a week. The driving position is fantastic. The ride is amazing. So I've had two defenders in the past, a 90 and a 110, both of which were the old models. And this is night and day better than that. Uh, I've also driven the Wranglers. Again, this is a lot less boaty, a lot nicer to drive. I'd say it's not quite as refined as the Mercedes G-Wagon, but so far, very impressed. Uh, this is the diesel. It is quite loud when you start and set off. Um, but fuel economy wise, I'm going about 22, 23 miles to the gallon. So I think if you're going to do any longer journeys or you need it to pull, go for the diesel. If it's just something to look cool around town, probably go for the petrol. Um, I want to show you something though, because this is such a big car. But a few people have asked me, is there space for a family? I'm six foot tall. So I've got this in my driving position. If I jump in the back, My knees are tight in and these are big seats so if I was a passenger here very dark can't see anything and it's very uncomfortable um, so for me if you're getting this as a family car and you've got big teenagers or you need loads of people in it it's not actually that practical um, but if you're, if you're driving it off-road or you're driving it for a purpose or it's mainly just the driver in it that shouldn't be a problem see <laughs> stuck. Um, the other thing I would say, when my mum got in it the other day, it's very tall. So I'd be inclined to get the side step put on. I think soon there'll be some good aftermarket side steps. I wouldn't spec the ones that you can get from Ineos. Um, but I'm sure very soon the likes of Urban, they're working on stuff, Khan are working on stuff. Those aftermarket ones, they will be bringing stuff out pretty soon. One thing there is a shortage of, you definitely need a wheel cover for this. This looks a bit naff. Um, I don't like the ones that you can spec from Ineos. Uh, I think they look a bit cheap. I think soon they'll be the ones like you could get on the Mercedes G-Wagon that will go all the way around and will really finish this off. Another thing I don't like is the finish in the boot. So Sonia, you'll have to get right in there. But if you look in the corners, it looks like there's trim missing and you can just see the glue or the foam that stuck it together. Um, for me, if you're spending 60, 70 grand on a car, there should be something there. The other thing that's not ideal is these seats don't fold flat. Uh, I think there's a few aftermarket things coming where you can get some drawers put in, which would then bring the height up. But for me, I'd like that to be a flat base. Um, boot height is brilliant. I don't think it's as practical as it could be. If you've got the two-seat commercial, that would be different. The other thing I would say, if you come around here, here, these bits here just look like they've been cut by hand. The finish isn't brilliant. It wouldn't have been difficult for them to, the rubber mats to extend round. If I was buying another one, I would go for the carpets to be fitted. I'm not 100% sure if it fixes that problem, but I think it might. Uh, it'll give, obviously, if you need it from a practical point of view, carpets are going to get muddy, but if you're driving it more as a, a town car, an everyday car, it'll deaden the noise a little bit and it'll feel a little bit more luxurious in, inside. Um, I've obviously ordered this, I've bought it, I've taken the plunge. Am I happy I did? Yes, I am. It looks brilliant. Um, it drives so much better than I thought. The, the problems that people were talking about, which we'll talk when Sonia drives it, they're not an issue. The, that uh, left foot bed didn't even consider to me. Um, the steering, once you've driven it 20, 30 minutes, it's fine. Um, I think it's a fantastic car. And soon we'll be putting some good kit on it. We're going to black out the windows, we're going to black out the front and back 
skid plate. You're going to get a, a good wheel cover for this. Um, and then we'll see what uh, aftermarket things come on. Uh, but I think it's time that Sonia gets in the driver's seat and we take it for a drive. So here we are, Sonia's <laughs> very first drive in the Ineos Grenadier. So trusting. <laughs> <laughs> I am so scared. <laughs> and away. So we're going to get a very true first impression oh, of what Sonia thinks. The steering's quite a lot. So the, steer the steering does take a bit of getting used to, um, but once you're used to it, I drove it for maybe 35 minutes back from the dealership the other day, and once I got back, I was fine with it. Jumped in the car the next day, was it wasn't an issue. Well, first test, narrow. Oh. <laughs> so this is the three litre diesel, uh, it is the five seat station wagon, uh, it's on the standard steels but it does have the bigger tyres on just for no other reason than they look cool. They look cool. So what, what are your thoughts son? I quite like it. What about your driving position? What uh, are your thoughts? Because Sonia hasn't read anything, so she doesn't know about the potentially dodgy footwell. Are you finding anything awkward in the footwell? No, nope. um, not at the moment, but maybe that's because I've got short legs, so nothing's getting so, in my way. So there's been a lot of talk about the left-hand footrest being too big. I have a very relaxed driving style, and I must admit, it just hasn't been an issue for me at all. As you've just heard Sonia there, she's jumped in the car for the first time, didn't even notice it. No. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that at all. It's pretty nice to drive. It is, the steering is quite like loose almost. You, you can wiggle the wheel and it's not, not a lot's going on. Yeah, there's a bit um, of play in the wheel. Yeah, but I think you just get used to that. Um, yeah, it's great. So are we uh, thumbs up or thumbs down so far? Thumbs up from me. <laughs> so I'm just pulling away here at the lights. Obviously we've got the windows down, but you can hear that diesel engine. It's quite quite loud. Hopefully you can hear it anyway. Um, you can see I've got used to the steering now. So back to like my 17 year old days where I'm driving with one hand because I think it looks cool. But, um, <laughs> That diesel engine with the windows down particularly, it's, it's quite loud. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to drive down here and we're going to get to a 60 mile an hour bit. We'll put the windows up and then you can see what you think about sort of road noise and wind noise. So we're just coming from a 40 now into a 60. It's got quite a good bit of poke. Um, I would say, well we haven't got there because there's traffic, we're at 45.50 very little road noise even though we've got the uh, bigger tyres on. Uh, let me turn the aircon off. No sort of winds, we're up to 50. You can hear the engine, that's the noise you hear there. Up to 60, 55. Steering is great, you know, one hand on the wheel it's, it's not an issue. Um, it's very refined for this kind of car. Obviously, if you're coming from like a Range Rover Sport or something like that, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, but I think if you're coming from an old Defender, a Wrangler, something, even an older car that's that's like a normal car, I don't think you're going to be disappointed with this. We're going to turn right here and we'll be able to get it up to 60. Uh, so you'll be able to get a full idea of the road noise. So there, when I'm coming around a roundabout there, that my one hand, lack of talent came into play there so so here we go so we we can punch it through now got quite a good bit of poke there we go up to 60 bit of road noise bit of winds steering's fine holds the road really nicely all in all drives so much better on the road than I was expecting right thank you for watching um, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please like and uh, follow us. 
we will be posting more videos as we do more kit, like put kit on it and as we take it off road and as we do different stuff if you've got any questions put it in the comments uh, anything specific about the car and we'll do a little video if it needs it or answer your questions uh, but for now i'm just going to enjoy the drive like and subscribe